Hey guys, Feli here, and for this video we're going to do another explanation on how I color in Photoshop, but this time we're really going to break it down. So we're going to start from the beginning, and I'll give you step-by-step -step instructions on what I do and how I go about doing it. And then we'll let it in, it makes it a little easier, and maybe it's a technique you can use when coloring your line art. So let's get into it. So first thing is first, is what program do I use? It's the most frequent question. And the answer is Photoshop CC 2018. So we're gonna open this up. And the first thing you need to do when opening Photoshop is bring in your light art. For that, if it's made in the app, and you digitally inked it, then there's no prep work really for you to do. Only thing I advise is once you either finish your line art or if you ported in a picture from the internet or you scanned it and cleaned it up, make sure when you are ready to color it that you started your canvas on a decent size. I notice a lot of artists are working on 72 DPI, which is small unless you have the canvas size already big, but even then on 72 DPI, you're not gonna be able to do much with it either to, besides post it on the internet. For a default for me, the lowest I will ever work on is 150 DPI, but normally the minimum is 300. So I put it at 300, I usually leave my canvas at a decent size. Um, eight and a half by 11 standard paper or 11 by 17. This makes it easier when you need to use the magic wand to select the area and all that versus if it's on 72, it has a hard time getting between all those pixels. So once you have your line art cleaned up, ready to go, it's time to do the flats. Also known as the base colors for those that aren't artwork trendy in a digital space so if you have line art that is kind of loose there's gaps in it where you can't use the wand to select whole areas then either you're gonna have to go in there and close off all the gaps or you're gonna have to go ahead and just get a brush and fill it all in for this piece it's gonna take too much work to go ahead and close every single spot. This is a loose ink piece and there's holes everywhere. So I'm gonna use the brush. What brush am I using? I am using the default hard round brush. That and it's set to 100% opacity and flow. So I'm using that to fill in all the colors. And once I have a solid color, I block out the whole uh, object first that way if I need to select or anything later on I can just use the wand on that since the line art is unclickable as far as doing it and selecting the whole thing so I use the hard round brush to fill in the base colors and then I do the individual colors for specific items once that is done I put that on another layer or excuse me, let me correct myself. First, I need to tell you, your line art layer, especially if you scanned your photo and brought it in, it needs to be on multiply or else the colors under it won't show. So line art layer on multiply. Your base layer is gonna be under it and that's just gonna be a regular layer. Now, next I'm gonna get into highlights and shadows. So we're gonna start with shadows first. I create a new layer on top of the base color layer. I'm gonna to go to the layer options and set it to multiply. This is what I do to give the art the look of shadows. And I would use one color to uniform the whole piece. So I usually go with like a purple, gray, kind of light, um, middle of the scale and I'm gonna use the lasso tool to block out all the areas I feel the shadow should be at. 
So once I do all this, I'm gonna select all the areas I fill. Sometimes I'll do the whole thing, map it out all with the lasso tool, or I'll do piece by piece. But once you do that, you can use the paint bucket tool um, at usually 100%, or you can lower it if you don't want it as strong. And I'm gonna drop that in there. And as you can see, since it's set to multiply, even though I selected a gray color, it's using it to darken what's already underneath it. And now it looks like a uniform shadow versus if I went each section and used a darker version of the base color that's there. So after I'm done with that, I usually go on to the next layer. So you can create a new layer over that one. And you're gonna go to the layer options and set that to overlay you can also if you don't like the, the effect the overlay gives I uh, sometimes use the highlight dodge or screen and you know play around with the layer options to see what you like but for my default I normally go to overlay so it's gonna be the same deal once the layer is set up I'm gonna use the lasso tool and I'm gonna go through and block out all the areas that I think the highlighted parts of these characters will be at now there's multiple ways to go about this. Now either you can just use the paint bucket and fill in the section, or you can use the airbrush and lower the opacity and the flow. I normally lower them to around 30% each, and then I do a little bit of feathering in there. So instead of being a solid block of color, like you would for the paint bucket, I just do, you know, gentle strokes and stroke it in there. That way it looks like I'm gradually building up color in that section. You know, if you had a more uh, painty style, um, mimicking something more traditional, this could be one way you can achieve that. Now, another way you can do the same effect but differently is still use a lasso tool, block out the area. But this time use the paint bucket and pour it into that section but then get the eraser tool to lower the opacity in the flow the same to you know I would say try starting out around 30 and I do the same thing I do feather strokes on that area and it's feathering it you're just gently erasing to build a gradation on that section and it gives the same effect of this is an airbrush piece at least in the section that you want it. And that's if you want something that's kind of softer like that versus just a hard uh, cell shaded look. Now, once these two main layers are done, I generally go and repeat the process. So for this piece, I might go ahead and start doing that everywhere it's needed. And you can just watch along because that's typically all I do in a nutshell. Now, this is the same process even if I do a second light source or uh, minor details, I may increase the amount of overlay layers or multiply layers. But it's still gonna be the same uh, method. So there you have it. As you can see, we used the same techniques that we discussed earlier to finish this piece. Even with, you see I added a secondary light source coming up from underneath. That was the same deal. I used the lasso tool, paint bucket fill, and I had the layer set to screen. And that's how I achieved that look. So, key things I want you to take away from this. You need to first prep your file. Make sure the line art is ready to be colored. You're gonna set that to multiply. Do your base layer uh, colors under that. Then you're gonna make a layer for shadows that's gonna be set to layer option multiply. And the layer for highlights set to overlay, uh, linear dodge or highlight or screen. And from there you just go through it and hopefully you play around, use different colors, you get different effects. Obviously for highlights, the lighter the color, the more you'll see a difference in that. And the same with multiply. You can start like a you know medium uh, shade color. And the darker you go, the darker it's gonna be. 
and give it a whirl. See what you think. Let me know in the comments below that you feel like this is something you can easily get into or you think it needs a deeper explanation. Other than that, if you want to check out some more of my work, you can go over to Instagram. My page is Art by Belly. Or you can also check out the tutorial page that we run. That is art.tips.tutorials. Till then, hit the like button, subscribe if you haven't yet, hit the bell so you get notifications, and I'll see you in the next one.